found spent shell casings, but they didn't find a victim. An hour later, a victim showed up at St. Joseph's Hospital with a gunshot wound to his shoulder. And then we got the fourth call at 721, and it was from an alarmed citizen who said that someone is firing shots again at Central Court Apartments. Uh, when the officers arrived, they immediately spotted a suspect that matched the shooter's description. They called back to radio to confirm the description. Once it was confirmed, they then started to approach Neil. They gave him orders to stop, but he immediately started to walk away from them, and as they gave those orders to stop, he started to run. He got into the courtyard and then started to climb up an outdoor staircase. He got to the third floor of that staircase, and at that point, he turned away from the officers and they could see him pulling something out of his pant leg on his right side. While he was going up the staircase, they were giving orders for him to show his hands. They couldn't see his hands. They knew he had his right hand to his side. They knew that there had been shots fired at this complex. They were repeatedly giving him orders to show his hands and he didn't comply. When he got to the third floor, he turned away from the officers and began to pull something out of his pants. They, then he turned toward the officers, and at that point, they saw that he was armed with a pistol grip, assault-style shotgun, and, that, and at that point, the officers fired. And we have an account from a witness who said that there is no doubt in his mind that if the officers didn't fire, that they may not be alive today, that they didn't have any choice but to fire. And we have learned since our witness interviews uh, we, we believe that we have identified the source of the misinformation from witnesses. When the officers ran up the staircase and when the suspect ran up the staircase, they all passed an individual who was on the second floor. When the officers were yelling, stop, free, show your hands, the man on the second floor put his hands up in the air. The suspect never put his hands in the air. He pointed the gun at the officers. And so we believe that is what's causing the misinformation in the community. Now, we have witness accounts of the witnesses who saw the events as they unfolded, and they are very consistent with the officer's account. And so if there are other individuals who have failed to come forward who claim to be witnesses, then we urge them to come in. They need to come in and give us a sworn statement. We were out there the entire night. We interviewed everyone who said that they were a witness to this shooting. All of those witness accounts are consistent with the officer's version of the events. So if there are other individuals who now say they have a different account, they need to come in and give us a sworn statement. Uh, we have also learned from witnesses that, let me say it again, uh, we've also learned that there were accounts that Neil had the weapon in his pant leg in the parking lot just before the officers arrived. We've learned that from our investigation as well as the information about the individual in the staircase. Um, oh, and another point that came out um, in the investigation is the suspect was standing next to a railing that was 48 inches high, which means he had to hold that gun at least four feet off the ground at chest level in order for it to fall over that railing and to hit the ground after the shooting. If he had the weapon down low, obviously it would have just fallen on the uh, sidewalk. But he had that gun at least four inches, four feet off the ground at chest level in order for it to fall over the railing and onto the ground. Um, the bottom line is this is a very dangerous assault style weapon. It absolutely has no business being in the hands of a teenager. And that really is the crux of the tragedy of this shooting, that a teenager was armed with such a menacing assault style rifle not only was he armed with it but he pointed it at two police officers who if they had not fired would probably not be with us today you ready for questions I'm, yes okay do you believe that this guy is responsible for those other calls at this point all of that is under investigation we're reviewing each one of those calls and we're looking at his history because we've had contact with him multiple times one where there was a threat of a shooting at Stewart Middle School. He was involved in the reports that we had that he was potentially armed. Um, there was never an arrest in that investigation, but there are reports of him being armed. We've had quite a bit of contact with him and in a couple of those occasions where there were reports that he was armed, also where he's been involved in fights. He's never been arrested, but he's certainly not a stranger to law enforcement. He's someone that we did come in contact with quite a bit. 
uh, there's at least seven reports of contact with him and at least two and possibly more where he was uh, believed to be armed. And at this point, uh, Homicide is reviewing all of those reports and as they allow me, I'll be releasing them to you. I can give you two now uh, at the end of this briefing. And, sorry, go ahead. If you've got a teenager with a weapon, how come he wasn't arrested in those cases? Well, all of those are reports that he was armed. And then we went out there and conducted an investigation and never had enough for an arrest. We heard he was uh, at an alternative school. Do you know what led to that? I don't know. I, I mean, there are reports of him fighting at school. There was the, uh, we, we conducted a pretty thorough investigation of the possibility of a shooting at Stewart Middle, and he was part of all of those allegations and uh, concerns about the possibility of a shooting. There. When was that? Uh, I have a copy of the report. Okay, okay, okay. But that. he was a student there at the time? Yes. Unless it, okay. What I can give you a copy of is the, the initial preliminary report. Okay. We did do a more thorough investigation. I just haven't been clear to release that yet. The apartment complex where all of this happened is equipped with video surveillance. Have you all had access to that? We are pulling the video and the reviewing all of that. And any idea on when that might be made available? Well, we obviously have a very thorough investigation going on with both the Internal Affairs Bureau of the department, the Homicide Shoot Team, and the State Attorney's Office. We have a 16-year-old who has been killed, so this is a very serious uh, investigation and that all of that video, if there is any that actually captures a shooting or any portion of it would be part of that. So it's going to be a thorough investigation. Uh, I can't say exactly how long it will take. 